competitive singles Pokemon is played at level 100. After all, you want to be as strong as you can be. But there are rare situations where you might not want to be level 100. Sometimes being at a lower level actually helps you. We're going to look at every time people use a non-level 100 Pokemon in competitive singles Pokemon. I won't be including level 1 Endeavor strategies. While they are good at fooling new players and players who have never seen it before, these strategies are considered to be bad because they don't work against people who know what they're doing. Also, make sure to subscribe, it helps the channel out a lot. First up is the most famous example, which is level 99 Sloking. Before Kyurem would end up getting banned, Sloking was an incredibly meta Pokemon. It was used on a lot of different teams, and one of its key attributes was to tank a hit and then use Teleport to switch out after the opponent makes their move. Then, it would heal the damage it took with Regenerator. It was useful to gain momentum because Teleport always moves last, so you can react to your opponent and go to the appropriate Pokemon. But what happens if it's Sloking versus Sloking? Everyone is already running zero speed IVs and a negative speed nature, which means it would be a speed tie each time. If you wanted to guarantee underspeeding opposing Sloking, you had to go with a level 99 Sloking. This trended for a little bit when Sloking was at its peak usage, but faded over time and now it's never seen. Another example is Kofa Grigus in Generation 7 NU. Singles Pokemon is divided into tiers based on how often Pokemon are used. That way weaker Pokemon can still have a place to shine when they're fighting Pokemon of a similar power level. In the NU tier, Kofa Grigus would end up getting banned from the tier, but before it was banned it was terrorizing the tier with its Trick Room moveset. Nasty Plot plus Trick Room along with Ghost DMZ made it incredibly difficult to deal with. Kofa Grigus was tough to KO because of its high bulk and Trick Room solved its issue with speed. Kofa Grigus would end up becoming so dominating on the meta that people started using level 99 Kofa Grigus, that way in Trick Room, they can outspeed other Kofa Grigus. Of course, the counter to level 99 Kofa Grigus is to use level 98 Kofa Grigus, and there developed a speed war with people trying to beat Kofa Grigus with their own Kofa Grigus. Some people even went as far as using level 97 or even level 96 Kofa Grigus in order to win the war. Similarly, in Generation 7 PU, Executor Alola was dominating the tier with its Trick Room moveset as well. Before it got banned, it was terrorizing the tier with its Trick Room, Draco Meteor, Leaf Storm, and Flamethrower moveset. Once again, people started using level 99 to be able to use their Executor Alola to outspeed other Executor Alola. Next is level 97 Slurpuff in Generation 7 Ubers. I've talked about this in a previous video, but Slurpuff finds itself actually usable in the Uberth tier as a suicide lead. Its main goal is to set up Sticky Web and Faint. By using a Focus Sash, it's guaranteed to live one hit and get that Sticky Web up. However, there's also one more added benefit. If an attack triggers Focus Sash, then that triggers Slurpuff's ability Unburden, which doubles Slurpuff's speed. This lets it get off another move like Yawn before fainting. By using a negative special defense nature and level 97, Slurpuff becomes weak enough that Arceus's judgment becomes guaranteed to trigger the Focus Sash, thus allowing Slurpuff to get one more move off. Slurpuff is a suicide lead anyway. It's designed to die. It doesn't care about all the negative effects of being low level, like the loss in power or bulk. A natural question is that if you don't care about bulk anyway, why not go even lower so that there are even more attacks that would trigger Focus Sash? The problem there is that if you go too low a level, then your speed becomes too low that it's not good anymore even with an Unburden. Level 97 is a sweet spot where you're fast enough to outspeed everything you need, but also weak enough to trigger Focus Sash from common attacks like Arceus' Judgment. Similar to Sloking in Generation 8 OU, Wishy Washy and Gen 7 NU also can run level 99. Wishy Washy is a powerful tank and pivot because of its slow U-turn. It can take a lot of hits and then threaten Pokemon out and U-turn on them. Ironically, one of the best ways to switch into a move like Scald from Wishy Washy is to use your own Wishy Washy. In the Wishy Washy vs Wishy Washy matchup, it makes sense to be level 99. That way when you both use U-turn, you are slower than your opponent and can react to what they bring in. Any tier where Wishy Washy is relevant can turn into a level 99 war, and this has happened before in other tiers briefly, but Generation 7 ZU is where it's most prominent. 
Next is a bit of a weird one from Chansey in Generation 1. This is more of an interesting application than anything actually standard. Here, Chansey can run level 85. The reason is that Chansey's main attack is Seismic Toss, which does damage equal to your level. If you're level 100, that means Seismic Toss does 100 HP of damage. But with level 85 Chansey, you do 85 HP of damage with each hit. But what's the big deal about 85? The big deal is that 3 hits of Seismic Toss leads to 255 damage. There's actually a bug in Generation 1 where if your HP is exactly 255 below your maximum HP, your recovery moves will fail. That means if a Pokemon gets hit by Seismic Toss 3 times, it can no longer use moves like Recover or Rest. This is important because Generation 1 games tend to be a little bit more drawn out with many Pokemon opting for recovery moves. Denying recovery is a big deal. Unfortunately though, at the end of the day, it's still a level 85 Chansey. That means it does lose a lot of bulk, and Chansey's role as a wall is dubious if it struggles to actually wall things. Still though, it's an interesting idea. Finally, we have Innards Out Pukumuku on Generation 7's stall teams. Innards Out is an ability that activates if the user is KO'd and it inflicts the same damage to the attacker. Pukumuku is overall not a Pokemon worth using, and generally speaking, if you were to use it, unaware is more reliable, but Innards Out level 96 does have some interesting applications for stall teams. By using a level 96 Innards Out Pukumuku with negative defenses, you can try and use Pukumuku as a sponge for powerful wall breakers. At exactly level 96, Pukumuku becomes weak enough, while also having enough HP, to knock out Hoopa Unbound in one shot. Hoopa Unbound is one of the strongest stall breakers ever, and Pukumuku offers some counterplay by taking a hit and fainting, but also taking Hoopa with it. Hoopa is the main target, but it can be used to take a large chunk of HP out of any powerful attacker. That's actually a good trade, because if a stall team can remove the stall breaker of a team, they can try and back themselves to win a 5 on 5, especially versus teams that completely rely on one Pokemon to do their stall breaking. Those are the mainstream examples in history, but in theory, anything can use level 99. While rare, any Trick Room Pokemon that becomes dominating can be matched by its level 99 form. Likewise, any slow pivot that becomes standard like Slowking can be matched by a level 99 version. Furthermore, Doubles Pokemon would likely have a lot more examples because Trick Room is a better strategy there. Overall, non-level 100 Pokemon are rare, but they have happened before. Let me know down in the comments below what list you want to see next.